Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just <laughs> real loud. And I, can't I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. So what we're going to do is um, I'm just in Adobe Premiere. If you guys want to use, um, you know, final or, you know, iMovie or, or anything like that, you can do that too. But we're just going to hit new project and we're going to start this and we're just going to name this, uh, you know, I'm just going to say like TikTok because what I'll do is I'll usually do like a 15 second clip for TikTok and stuff like that. Uh, I guess we'll do TikTok too. <laughs> I already have one named like that. Yeah. And so now once we're in Premiere, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up a new file, new sequence. And what this is going to do is basically this is how Premiere handles any projects and stuff like that. So we're going to go to sequence. And then in my settings, I'm going to do it as a custom video. So what we're going to do is in our editing mode, instead of this quick time, which it usually defaults to, mm -hmm. I'm just going to come up to custom. Okay. And the reason that we want to do this is because we actually want to change our frame size because we want it to fit vertically, right? So if you're doing this for, you don't have to do it for TikTok. We can do it for like a 15 second Instagram story thing too. So you don't think that you're like, oh man, now Sean's teaching me video and I have to jump on TikTok. Like, no, you don't have to do that. So we want it the same proportions though. So I'm going to set it to... 1080 on the horizontal and then we're going to set it to 1920 on the vertical so isn't the there reason isn't there already a setting for that like i get that you went to custom to enter that manually but isn't there there has to be a vertical setting for that there these days. probably is and i honestly i haven't updated this in so long that I haven't okay. even played around. That's fine. Most of them are going to be, yeah, and, and it might depend on your editing software too. I am not, I don't see one. In, in any case, Premier, if you, you were, if you were to do that, those are the settings. That's yep. 1920 by 10, by 1080 inverted to vertical yep. instead of horizontal. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the biggest thing, if, you, if you're setting up custom and like you mentioned, you know, iMovie probably has this final cut might have this premiere you could probably even download something. I just haven't looked at it just because yeah. it's the so updated simple version to might have it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I'm, on, I'm, I think I'm on the 2019 version of Creative yeah. Cloud for this. Um, and then for the, the pixel aspect ratio, I always just default this at one. Okay. So you want to make sure that that's set. Um, if you get some wonky aspect ratio that's not a nine by sixteen or sixteen by nine, depending on how you have it you're going to want to switch that up. So okay. make sure that you're selected for square pixels. Okay. But other than that, you're pretty much good to go. So it's basically like two tweaks. And then obviously you could name this if you had a, a client. So okay. since we're going to be doing um, a calls session, we're just going to hit okay. Okay. So now we set it up and you basically see our, our, our screen right here where we're going to preview our video. And I'm just going to come into finder and I'm just gonna drag all of these clips that I have right on over and it'll import for us. So you're importing both uh, movie files and some JPEGs there yep. I see, okay. Yeah, so um, as you can see, I have like one, two, three, four, five video clips and then I have three finished photos. Now were those and video like clips, is, were those video clips shot horizontally or vertically? Yeah, so, so one of the things that I do is I'm all about minimizing the amount of work that I have to do. And so <laughs> okay. one of the things that I like to do is for all, for most of the senior sessions that I do, I have a videographer come and vlog the sessions. Okay. So what I do then is have them Dropbox me all of the footage and then they can cut it together in one clip. Aiden, just uh, the videographer, just ended up sending me the, the raw files over mm -hmm. so I could just play with the clips. But what I then do is have them send it over to me and I have them shoot vertically. And then what we can do is they're high enough res that for social media purposes, you're not really going to notice right. yes. if you crop it vertically. So but I like to shoot it ver or horizontally. He's shooting horizontally, sorry. Yep. And, you, and then yeah, you're cropping vertically this, out of that. Exactly, because okay. we're gonna use this for YouTube and stuff like that. So we wanna make sure that it, it can fit multiple places and it's a lot easier to resize like, right. vertically than it is landscape. Of course. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to drag um, or double click on one of these files. Actually, let's do 
this one because we can kind of scrub through just by hovering our mouse over and kind of see I like what that. this clip's doing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to double click this and this is going to pop into our source monitor. So we're not actually editing with this quite yet. So this right. isn't in our timeline. Our timeline's down here. Right. But this is basically, we just wanted to get to the point where we want to actually pull it into the timeline. And this is what I do because it, it just minimizes a lot of work for you and you don't really have to, to do anything in particular except for pretty much just scrub through your footage just like that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this blue arrow and I just want it um, someplace where I'm shooting. So actually at the beginning of the clip, kind of raising up my camera. And what I'm going to do is you have two points right here. So it says mark in mm -hmm. and mark out. And so for the mark in, I'm usually, I just want like a two second clip. I want this pretty fast paced, pretty high, high energy. So I'm just going to click the mark in at the point that I want it to start. And then we can either hit the play button or I just like to drag just cause it's a little bit more exact and I can go a little bit quicker. Yep. And notice we have our time code down here. So this yep. says like we had, a, uh, you know, the way that it's set is it's about 48 minutes and it depends on how you have your camera formatted. So Aiden's is just formatted like this. So that's how it pulled in, but watch that 54. So that 54 seconds and we just want a couple seconds. So probably right about there is going to be good. And I'm going to hit mark out. Yep. And now what it'll do is it'll select this little piece. And all we have to do is we can either drag from here and it'll pull both the audio and the video. Mm -hmm. Or if we could drag here, it drags only the video or only the audio. So oh, I nice. only want the video. Great. Yeah. That way we don't have to really worry about playing with the audio or messing right. anything up. Okay. And I'm going to just maximize this so we can see a little bit of what we're working with a little bit better. So I'm going to drag the video down just like that. And it's going to ask us if we want to change our settings. We want it. We specifically, cause notice that this is a, about a, a 1920 by 1080. Yep. We're in 1080 by 1920. Right. So it's going to ask if we want to change it and we're going to say, keep existing settings. Okay. That way when it pulls in, there it is. Right. Yep. Just like that. I'm going to hit the plus a couple times on my keyboard just to zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we You're can zoom in on the time. Right. Bit. Yep, on that timeline. And make sure if it's not doing that, make sure that you have these the blue kind of outline right. on that timeline or else it right. won't work. Yeah, that's the frame that's selected. Yes, exactly. Right. So then what we're going to do is I'm just going to um, come here and make sure that that all looks good. And then pretty much what I'm going to do before anything else with this clip is just go through and repeat that process. So double click. And I kind of wanted where she was fixing her hair. I want to throw that in, kind of showing the behind the scenes a little bit. Sure. So we'll grab, you know, maybe start right there, mark in, and we can hit I on our keyboard if you are really into shortcuts, but I'm just going to click this button. Mm -hmm. And another two seconds, I'm probably going to head to about three or four seconds, probably like right about there, mm -hmm. mark out. And then we're just going to drag it right back into the timeline. And real and quickly are, on the on that time code up there, that blue time code, forty eight mm -hmm. minutes four seconds, and then the zero two right now, that's frames, right? Yeah. So you have basically frames and seconds. So if we even pop, you know, if we use the the right arrow, yep. we can we can get it super exact just by kind of scrubbing through that frames. Right. Okay. And notice that we're in um, instead of a normally people will shoot in thirty, right. I shoot everything in twenty four. P yep. because it goes a little, it's a little bit more cinematic in my right. opinion. So right. I have all my videographers for the vlogs shoot in 24 P. Awesome. That's what I was getting to. I was hoping Yeah, <laughs> I was going to go that route. I wanted to, I wanted to point out that you were shooting in 24 instead of 30 and, and yeah, why that's so 30, important. And there's nothing wrong with shooting in 30. Your right. iPhone is most likely going to shoot in 30. Most right. everything's going to shoot in 30. If it's just kind of a right. point and shoot, um, you can ch change it to 24 though. And it, it, Basically, you lose a few frames, but that's pretty much what all Hollywood is shot in. And there are mm -hmm. very few movies that are not shot in 24. Right. Um, what was the Will Smith movie that was that came out recently? It was like him, young and old. And well, and it, that was. There was one. I don't know. Ang Lee did it once and shot, and then Peter Jackson did it with uh, the Hobbit, didn't he? It was like 48 frames, and yeah, and then Ang so, Lee, Ang Lee directed a movie, I think, and shot in 120 frames. 
a second yeah, or something so you'll ridiculous. See, you'll see weird frame rates because I know the <laughs> Will Smith movie was shot in 60 and yeah. 60 and 30 to me are just so sharp. It's like that TV quality right, where it right, doesn't right. look right. good. Right. Um, so I just shoot everything in 24. And then if we want to do slow motion, I'll have them shoot in 60. But right. that's, you know, that's another Jed Learns topic for <laughs> later down the road. Right, right, right. So basically we have this. So we have kind of behind the scenes. And notice uh, on my scrub through, it's on this playback monitor. Yeah. So I'm just going to scrub through. That looks good. And then I'm going to grab this clip, kind of the zoom in. And once again, we're just going to scrub through, grab kind of where I want. Make sure she's not like flipping me off on twisting her hair or anything right, like that. Right. Right there. Let's see if she looks up or anything. So we might want to oh, pull good. that clip. So I might even mark in actually a little bit further. Right. So really you're just dragging through and kind of seeing where in the clips that you want and marking out and then dragging the video. So it's yeah, a that's a neat little moment right there where she looks yeah, up. It's a, it's a repetitive process, but it's, it's super quick and easy to do. So once you get a hang of it, I mean, you could do this in 30, 40 seconds. If yeah, you're real quick quickly, right. Um, and then right here, if you hover over this, say I want a little bit more, you can actually just drag it and it'll extend the clip. And you can kind of see where it says um, duration right to the left of that, yes. how many frames or how many seconds you're adding to the clip. So okay. you can kind of keep an eye on that. And you're adding and from that clip up there that you initially scrubbed. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't. So if you pull not enough or anything like that, you can just add it in that timeline, okay. which is yep. super nice. Mm -hmm. And then let's grab one other, one or two other ones. So let's do. Um, I think I kind of adjust the. the are we going to even pull this one? Let's do that. So we'll pull from here. Just kind of me shooting for like two seconds, or not even a second. Drag it down, and then I'm also going to pull from the same clip, and we can mark in and out again at a different point. It'll create a new one, but I just want kind of where I like kind of kick and adjust the reflector a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't like hit her in the face or right. something like that. Right. But again, Pulse that up. movement and that motion, that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for little bits and pieces of movement or, or motion, like something that expresses exactly. something really quickly, right? Rather than, you know, something that's held out for, you don't need 10 seconds of just the same thing on the screen. Nope. Not at all. And that's why I kind of like, you know, especially like when, when she's moving or posing, um, you know, checking back of the camera and stuff. So like I might grab this. Yeah. That little one or two second spot right there where you guys are both looking at it. Yep. Exactly. And then one thing I'll note is if you hit S on your keyboard, this little magnet lights up and what that'll do is it'll snap to your project. So notice that what happens is when I kind of get it close, there's that little line. And that yeah. just makes sure that you don't have any gaps in your video. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just scrubbing through and and really just looking for moments that would be good for kind of behind the scenes stuff. Right. And your goal is around 15 seconds for a story or a TikTok video. Yeah. And so, you know, we're right at about you know, 10 seconds mm -hmm. after I add this clip. So that's probably about good. Mm-hmm. Because okay, you want room cool. for stills, yes? I do, yeah. yeah. So that's why I left a little bit of room. So I have okay. about three stills. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, command select all of these, control on PC. And for for photos, it's going to default at five seconds from most software. Okay. But what we want to do is we, we don't want it to be that long. So I'm going to select it. And I want these each to be about two seconds or so. So I'm just going to right click. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit click on speed and duration. And then what we can do is we can come over here to duration and I'm going to set it to two seconds. And we're zero just going to do that. So duration two, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I'm going to click OK. And then what I'm going to do here is drag these all in. So we can drag them all in at once. Yep. Notice how it snaps in again. Yep. And then we're going to start adjusting these video files because okay. notice we want them to fill the entire screen. Sure. So this is super simple. I'm just going to click this and then I'm going to come over here to the, the source panel and I'm going to change it to effect controls. Okay. And here what we can do, this looks pretty familiar. You know, if you've played around in Photoshop, you probably know what position does or scale or whatnot. Basically you're just moving it around. Right. And so I'm going to just adjust the scale to fill the frame. I see Usually that. it's about one, 
180 for this. And then I'm just going to move it. So you have your, your X and your Y. Right. So X is going to move it left and right. Yep. So I'm probably just, you know, frame it up right about there. And then we can just kind of scrub through and make sure that that looks good on the video. Yep. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to repeat that for this one as well. So you're basically just going to come through and move it exactly kind of where you want in the frame and then double check to make sure everything's good. If you wanted to adjust the scale on all of those clips at once, could you highlight all of them and then adjust the scale globally to everything that was highlighted? Totally, yeah, so okay. you should be able to. Or maybe you can't. I don't know. I stand corrected. But what you could do is if you wanted to, you could just basically hit um, select the scale, all right. hit command C to copy, and then you could paste this. Oh, for real? You should be able to. Or maybe you can't. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you do have to adjust it manually. There, there might that be ended a way. Up being maybe a good I just question. don't know. <laughs> yeah, Jed, Jed is uh, making me look bad on here. But yeah, you should be able to. I'm actually surprised that you can't. But I mean, it it only takes about like two. Well, seconds. we're 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 editing actually, a fifteen. It's a fifteen second video, not, an, not yeah. a two hour film. Let's try it, copying the motion over. Yeah. So actually, if you select motion instead of just scale, you can copy and paste it. Oh, neat. Okay, good. Yeah, but this one, notice that if we zoom uh, zoom out a little bit, actually, it's probably pretty good right there. Yeah, so that works. So we could actually just copy and paste it over. Great. Just Command-C, Command-V, copy, paste. Good, that's good And then know. everything everything will be transferred over. I, I don't really mind doing it by hand because what's going to happen is I'm going to come over here for the the adjustment on the, for the position anyway you're gonna have to do yeah. that every time that's all yep. that's all manually like where how you want it positioned on the x and the y right well really yeah, just exactly. really just the x pretty much just the x yeah because mm -hmm. we're not moving it vertically at all right and that's right. just to make sure that the clips are lined up okay yep makes sense so that's probably good right there and remember you can scrub through and make sure that you're getting the part of the clip that you want that's so, so like great. this i might want a little more camera in it yep and then select, and I'm just moving this. This is just so we can see kind of where in that timeline we're working. Right. right. So that looks pretty good. Cool. I love and it. then we're gonna do the same for the for the photos. So for these, I select. I um, recommend using vertical photos, so portrait orientated one. Right. Orient. Orient. I don't know whatever word it is. <laughs> and because they're already they they were already shot that way and, and framed to be that precisely. Way. Yeah. Right. And then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. Scale and make sure that that's correct. And that one I had zoomed in a little bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we wanted to copy and paste this, we could do that as well. So Wonderful. command C, command V. Perfect. Just like that. Cool. And then what I'm gonna do is the next step is to save me a little bit of work. I'm gonna do something called the nest sequence. And what all that that does is basically put all your photos together or all your videos into one kind of almost like a clip but it's not an edited clip. Like it's not a finalized clip. And what I mean by that is that if we need to make any changes, we can actually come into that nest sequence and make changes and it'll reflect on our, our basically on our new, on our timeline. And I'll show you kind of what that means. So I don't know this. Click, this is, this is completely yeah. new to me. So, and there's a reason that I'm doing this. So I'm going to click nest and I'm just going to say, you know, we could just say B-roll or something like that, or we could even just keep it named as what we had that. So I'm just going to click OK. And now what we can do is if we need to edit this at all, so let's just use this for an example. So say we wanted to zoom in on this clip, rather than it being a finalized clip, if we double click this, we can actually come into this original clip. Let's say we wanted to scale it up and like zoom in on McCall or something like that. Yeah. If we come back here, notice how it reflects in this timeline. So now, rather than it being zoomed out like we had originally had, see that? Yeah. I'm going to hit edit redo so we can see that. Yep. Basically, yep. Oh. I edited in that nested clip in this new sequence and we can just switch back and forth by clicking these tabs. And it'll show you, it'll basically update and reflect those changes right in timeline. So, the, so cool. the, the nested sequence shows up on the top of your timeline as because you can go back and forth then. Yeah, so you could go back and forth um, right. and edit anything in here.
Nice. And the main reason that you'll want to do a nested sequence is if you're going to apply kind of like a universal um, change to to all of those clips right. that you want to do all at once. So right. you could do it with an adjustment layer, but for this, we need to do it as a nested sequence. And I'm going to do this for the photos as well. Is it kind of like just, grouping things in Photoshop? It's like grouping layers in it Photoshop? It kind of is, yeah. Because if you, you know, you could go ahead and change the group and it'll affect like the right. universal layer. Right, um, okay. So that's kind of nice. And what I'm gonna do is the reason that I just nested all of these individually, so I didn't do mm -hmm. all the photos together, and that's for a very particular reason. I did them separately, but I did these videos together. And the reason that I wanna do that is because I'm gonna come to the effects panel, and I'm gonna type in transform. And under the video effects distort, there's a transform effect. And so, if we were to apply this at, to the whole layer, it, or to each clip individually, we'd have to do it individually. But I just mm -hmm. wanted the very end of this, of end of this, and what I'm going to do is basically it's going to set our photos as kind of the working space is right here. So, and I'll show you. I'll, we'll kind of go that back if, if you don't nest it and kind of what happens. But oh, okay, okay. Here, what we're going to do is add an effect. So I'm gonna to come to the very, very end of this uh, of this clip just by hitting the down arrow. Okay. Oh, and yeah. that'll jump us. So I if like you that. hit the up arrow, it'll jump you to the beginning, mm -hmm. down arrow will jump you to the back. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna come into transform. So we've already applied that effect just by dragging it right onto this clip. Right. And I'm gonna check this little stopwatch for scale. Yeah. And I'm gonna also, change the shutter angle to 180. And I'm gonna make sure that I uncheck use compositions shutter angle. Okay. <laughs> so just three steps, that's it. Right, I know, right. it's getting, Jed's like, oh my goodness, I'm getting worried, this is getting a little complicated. <laughs> but that's all you need to do. Okay. And so what we're, what we're gonna do is gonna do a transition effect so that it's not just a hard cut between the videos. Okay. We're gonna kind of do like almost like a zoom in type of look. So on the scale, we're at the very, very end of that frame. So just by hitting that down arrow and I'm going to select 150 and you're not going to see anything happen yet, but we're going to go back about three frames. So you can just hit the left arrow three times. So one, two, three, and then I'm going to hit this and I'm going to select a hundred. So see what happens? Yes. It's almost like a zoom in. Effect. Yes. Yeah. And real now fast. what I'm going to do is I'm going to select transform again. I'm going to drag it onto this frame. I'm going to hit the down arrow on our timeline to get to the very beginning of this clip. Uh -huh. If you're too far, you can hit the up arrow. Okay. And the exact same thing. I'm going to check scale. I'm going to check shuttering, or I'm not going to, you don't have to check this. You can just change it to 180 and uncheck this. Uncheck that again. Yep. And then at the beginning of the clip, you're going to want 150. Right. And then we're going to go three frames in. So we're just going to hit the three right. Three to the right. Times. One, two, yep. three. And then change scale hit to 100. 100. I so got see what it. we're doing? <clears throat> Basically, now what we've done is we've done this cool transition effect. So now when we play it back, Neat. it kind of is that zoom in. Yep. I like it. Just like that. And then what we're going to do at the end of this clip, we're going to come and do the exact same mm -hmm. thing. So we're going to select 150, come back three clips and select 100. If the effect is like too quick, you can always just move this back, say like five frames or something. Right. And the reason that I changed these all to the exact same time is because now on the transform, we can just highlight it, Command C, and now we can just paste it into these others by selecting and hitting Command V. And now Great. we have all of our transitions done. Great. And then on this one, what we can do is if we're doing a, uh, a TikTok, we could actually choose to loop it and have it do that transition in the beginning. Or we can just delete the transition by coming in and selecting both of these uh, keyframes. So here and here mm -hmm. by hitting command and just deleting them. Okay. And then that'll end the video without that transition. Yeah, that won't be part of it, right? Yep. And then what we could do is if we wanted to add music, we could, or we can add it inside of Instagram so we don't get tagged <clears> with copyright <throat> issues if we don't have the license for well, it. Well, that's a big, then, okay, that's a big question. Yeah. So within Instagram and within TikTok, you need to do that editing within the app. 
the music I suggest, yeah, I recommend you adding right. the music posts because you're not going to get tagged for any copyright stuff. Right. Yeah. So, and you could upload it with your own music, but if you don't tag the author or the, the song artist in it, then what's going to happen is you might get tagged for copyright issues and then you're not, yeah, you're going to have your video taken down. Then you have all kinds of issues. So here's my yep. last question at this point. I see that what we have is like 16 seconds. Yep. But I want 15 seconds. So then all we had to do, let's just say this, if we want 15 seconds uh -huh. and Instagram will let you actually do more now because it'll just automatically copy over into the next clip. But if we wanted to do that, we could just drag this next one just like that mm -hmm. and cut it to 15 seconds. Now so what that's going to do, shorter. what that's going to do is, is shorten that last piece. Mm -hmm. But would there, is there a way for me to highlight all of it and smush the whole thing down to 15 yeah, seconds? Yeah, so you totally could. So one thing that you could do is uh, we're going to create another nest sequence just because everything's together. Right. And let's just say shortened. Okay. And what we could do is we could select this, right click, come over to speed duration. Yes, that's what I was thinking. And then we could change this manually to 15 seconds. And what this will do is it'll speed up everything mm -hmm. by, you know, <clears throat> just a little bit, 7%. Yeah. And so it'll be a little bit quicker, just like this, but you're not really going to notice it. So as long as you're close to that 15 right. second mark, you're not going to really notice every, right. anything. And now this will be an exactly a 15 second clip. So now Wonderful. we have our final edited images all mixed in and stuff like Wonderful. that. Wonderful. So that's kind of a quick behind the scenes. And then when we're done, all we have to do is hit file, export, media. And we can you know, choose where we want to save it in our output name or whatnot. And then pretty much everything is good to go. So we just have to hit export choose where we want to save it and we're good to go. And, and then you have a, and then you have a 15 second yeah behind the scenes clip integrated with some imagery from the shoot that you can throw into Instagram, throw into TikTok and then edit within those platforms within those apps, add music, um yeah. throw throw your you know make sure you tag your people and like what what are you what specifically do you do besides adding the music in general? You tag the person there's some yeah, hashtags the person, in there. Tag the person, use some uh, hashtags on TikTok. Yep. And then usually what I'll do is I'll add some text in TikTok too. Okay. And the reason for adding text is because you want to grab those people's attention like right away. Right. And so if you're just like behind the scenes, uh, you know, or let's just say like um, something that happened, like check out how, like this is what, what it looks like. And then this is what it looks like on camera or something right. like that. And you can edit it, the duration right. on that. Right. So yeah, you have some flexibility inside of TikTok, but that's kind of how I would, I would do it. And, um, if you're, if you kind of get quick at this, you do it three or four times. I mean, I can do one of these in about five minutes. Tops. Right. right. I yeah, was just going to say, you, you could do that and just, you can do what you just did in a few minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, and if we wanted to get really, you know, really fast, it's, I mean, you can basically just come through and you get really quick, select, boom. I mean, it does not take very long. Right. So you could basically select. Well, and you're used say, to, and the more you do it, the more used to the interface you get, like just like exactly. with anything I mean, else. So that, you know, that was three minutes of the tutorial right there. And right. that <laughs> took me three seconds. Right, yeah. right, right. So Wonderful. The faster you get, the better, but. That's how I create my TikToks and behind the scenes stuff for Instagram. And what you can even do is, you know, post on TikTok and then save it, post it to your Instagram story and say, do like a poll or something like that. of like, Hey, are you following the behind the scenes right. on TikTok or something right. like that? And do that cross, kind right. of that cross promotion right there. Right. You want people looking at yeah. you everywhere. Yeah. So you basically, you know, drive <laughs> following on both platforms by posting some exclusive content on both. It's wonderful. Hey yeah. man, this was great. Thanks for this tidbit. Thanks for these yeah, tips Yeah, you guys are tricks. welcome. I hope that helps out some photographers and gets them a little bit less scared of, of video and introducing it into their businesses. Don't be afraid. Jump yeah. in. Give it a shot. It's worth All right, it. brother. Hey, you have a good one and I will see Thanks. you the next you time. Too, Jed. Thanks for having me on. Hey guys, thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. 